I'm Alex Sharfin, and this is the Momentum Podcast, made for empire builders, game changers, trailblazers, shot takers, record breakers, world makers, and creators of all kinds. Those among us who can't turn it off and don't know why anyone would want to. We challenge complacency, destroy apathy, and we are obsessed with creating momentum so we can roll over bureaucracy and make our greatest contribution. Sure, we pay attention to their rules, but only so that we can bend them, break them, then rewrite them around our own will. We don't accept our destiny, we define it. We don't understand defeat because you only lose if you stop, and we don't know how. While the rest of the world strives for average and clings desperately to the status quo, we are the minority, the few, who are willing to hallucinate there could be a better future, and instead of just daydreaming of what could be, we endure the vulnerability and exposure it takes to make it real. We are the evolutionary hunters, clearly the most important people in the world, because entrepreneurs are the only source of consistent, positive human evolution, and we always will be. Tell your team first. Here's what I think every entrepreneur's real dream looks like. I think it looks like having a business where you can call your shots. You can tell people what you and your team are going to be able to accomplish. You can, you know, put your ideas into existence faster than the person who's competing with you. You can create the outcomes that you want at a rate that, you know, you just haven't yet. And and you can consistently and predictably get the results you want with a team that you trust and you like being around. See, I think that that really is like nirvana for entrepreneurs. If, if you wanted to, to say like, what would heaven be for an entrepreneur? Like throw all that stuff together. That's really what we want. See, entrepreneurs are driven to contribute at this higher level. And until we have that team around us where we feel the leverage of people around us moving everything forward, we just don't feel like we're going fast enough. Now, here's the challenge, though. For so many of us, when we get that early leverage, when we hire those initial team members, what happens is it feels like it's even more work. It feels like every day we're coming into the office and trying to carry this group of people forward. And every day we're, we're just strapping the business on and pulling it forward and checking on what everyone's doing and wondering what they're doing and trying to understand why you're not making more progress and not seeing the results you want. And then you have this team that you you have to face every day and be in front of and talk to, understanding that you're not getting the results you want. And here's what happens to people like us. If it's happened to you, I want to let you off the hook. It doesn't matter how nice of a person you are. If you're in this situation, you will just start to develop animosity towards your team. You will actually start to get frustrate with, frustrated with them. It doesn't even matter if things are going well. You'll start to get frustrated with them. You'll start to get irritated with them. You'll start to, to think that they're not working hard enough. It, and again, it doesn't matter if things are going well. Because if you get into the place where your team isn't doing what you think they should, you will have a really hard time just being there. And so telling your team first is the most important transition you have to make in order to create the momentum you want moving forward when it comes to what you do in the market. And here's the challenge for entrepreneurs, especially those of us who have built our businesses by like doing the Facebook videos, by recording the podcast, by creating the landing page videos, by writing the sales copy, by talking to people, by selling. Those of us who have been involved in the process the whole way through, we take a tremendous amount of ownership and pride in it. And it's also a lot of fun for us. Like, once you figure things out, it's fun to hit the button on a promotion. Once you figure things out, it's it, like that Facebook Live button is a tease. You know, once you figure things out, sitting down and writing a, an email to your list that you know is going to convert and make you tens of thousands or tens of thousands of dollars or more is like, that's a lot of fun. Adding a product feature 
giving a, putting a benefit out there that makes even more people bite. How much fun is that? Putting the right bonuses in place. Like this is stuff that becomes semi-addictive for any of us who have built our business from the ground up. I know that the entire time I've owned any business I've ever had, I always have it in my hand in sales and marketing and how we're presenting and how we're selling. And I'm usually like, I usually end up selling more than anybody in the company because we build systems around me so that I can sell more on webinars or in events or on live broadcasts or <clears throat> however we have in the past. But the transition that you have to make in sales and marketing when you build a team is you have to tell your team first about every promotion, every product update um, or change, and every anticipated shift that you're going to make. And even operationally, you should tell your team about every anticipated operational shift because, you know, in every single team, there's different types of people. A lot of most entrepreneurs are, are like the driver types, the, the person who wants to get things done and want to make, some, make them happen, but a team needs all types of people. And so you're going to have that population of people who like to take care of other people, the people who um, have a more, more of a, a, an instinct towards keeping things the same, towards being, you know, being stable, and you have to have those people. Here's the challenge. Every change that's made scares them. So you have to let them know it's coming first. And there comes a time right around the time when you build a team that if you're not telling them first about every promotion, every product, every shift that you're going to make, what happens is they're playing catch up and your customers know first. And here's the most difficult thing in the world for people like us to do is to slow down enough that our team hears it first, to slow down enough that once the promotion's done, our team hears it first, to schedule enough time that our team sees the webinar first, to put together enough of a schedule so that our team sees exactly what we're going to be promoting and understands exactly how we're going to be selling it and understands exactly how it's going to be out there so that they can react, they can build the systems on your side, they can understand what's coming in. Because here's what happens once you've built a team, if you keep marketing the way you always have without telling them where you're going first, they will always be behind you. And if your entire team is behind you, you will always be the greatest bottleneck. It's just math. If they're behind you, they literally can't get out in front. And so how do you help them get out there? How do you help them anticipate what's coming? How do you help them make sure that they aren't behind you, that they're not following, that they're out in front paving the way? Like this is how real entrepreneurs get there. You start telling your team first. You make sure the team knows about everything that's coming. You, under, you make sure that you're, you're showing every promotion to the team. You make sure you're showing every product change to, to the team, that they can, they can change the systems that they have. They can understand what's going to happen. They can look and see if they have capacity. They can adjust. And then what happens is everything starts going smoother. And the business starts moving in the direction you want. And the challenge will be that it's going to feel like your team is pushing back on success if you do this. And there will be misinterpretations, and it will be frustrating, and it will be hard for you to hear what they say. But the problem is if you are going out and promoting or changing your product or putting out enhancements or any of those things to the public first and not your team, it will always throw them off. And if they don't have an understanding of what's coming, they must follow you. So as an entrepreneur, we like to fight from behind. And so we don't understand how much of the rest of the world, including everyone on our team or almost everyone on our team, doesn't like to fight from behind. Because see, here's what happens for us. We can see the future. We know what's coming. We know we're about to hit live. We know we're about to change something. So for us... <clears throat> it, it's not a shock. It's not a surprise. It's not weird. It's not different. But when our team finds out that we're promoting something or selling something or changing something and they, they're they not the first ones to know, <clears throat> they feel like they're getting set up because entrepreneurs like to fight from behind. We don't even mind if we don't know first. As long as we have a shot, we're in. But our teams 
when they're fighting from behind, when they feel like they're catching up, when they feel like they were the second to know, when they feel like it could have been avoided, when there's any type of a hiccup, here's what they're thinking. I'm already giving you all I can. What do you want me to do with this? Because if you're running a business like I suspect you are, every person in the business is fully utilized. I don't think any entrepreneur that listens to my podcast has people just standing around looking at each other. The fact is, everyone on your team has a full-time job. And so anytime you communicate something to the market first and to them second, you've now taken everything they're doing full time and moved it aside for them and reprioritized everything because now they're reacting to you going out to the market, promoting, changing a product, adding a feature, giving another bonus item. And guys, here's how I know how destructive this is. I've done it all. I've announced new products on live broadcasts with thousands of people. I've changed, <laughs> I've changed on a, on a five day trip with five different promotional events. I've changed the features and benefits at each one. And my team was caught reacting. I've promoted things from stage that we've never sold before. I mean, we had all of the assets. We could put them together. We delivered, we delivered at a very high level. We've never had a return issue with any of our products, but my team was always playing catch up. And when I finally figured out how destructive it was that I was doing these things, when I finally figured out how much it violated their trust, and when I finally figured out how much for some of them, it caused like real feelings of anxiety and panic every time I did it. I was really lucky. I had some team members who were willing to sit down with me and tell me like what it really did to them and how it made them feel. And it forever changed my opinion of how I communicate sales and marketing to my team. Like my team knows when something's coming and we let them know that we're making a price change or I'm thinking about it before I make it. And <clears throat> when we're going to promote something, they know way ahead of time. And I want them to be able to anticipate what we're going to need, what kind of clients are going to show up, and what we're going to need to be able to do to operate at the highest level. And what I really want is I want to make it as easy as possible for them because every person on my team is working a full-time job. And I have a team of true believer fanatics, and I'm not kidding. I really do. And every one of them gets in early and stays late and checks in on the weekends and, and does a ton. And I never, ever want to be causing them constraint when it's avoidable. And if the difference between them feeling overwhelmed and anxious and real feelings of anxiety is me slowing down enough to communicate any change to them first, give them a chance to get used to it, understand what's going on, and then announce it to the rest of the world, that is a small price to pay to keep my team in full momentum, to build trust, to get them excited about working with me, and or to, get, to keep them excited about working with me and to deliver to our clients at the absolute highest level with the team we have. Because when you tell your team first, they get out in front and that's when people produce at the very highest level. When people understand the rules and they can anticipate what's coming next, they tend to win all the time. So when it comes to sales and marketing and your product, and any shifts you make in your organization, the key is to tell your team first, let them, them anticipate what's coming and help you get there. And when you make this shift, you can run any size company you want because a business is made up of a culture of duplicating decision making. And when you tell your team where you're going and you let them anticipate what's coming next and they understand any change and any adjustment before the market does, you build a culture where duplication of decision making is easier and clearer and less ambiguous than a culture where the team is constantly trying to catch up. Because when you build a culture where the team is trying to catch up, and constantly behind, and the market knows first, and promotions are affecting them, it's hard to build a culture of 
predictability. It's hard to build a culture of performance. It's hard to build a culture of trust. And when you tell your team first, you will build a culture where all of those things are a reality because you're leading by example and showing them that they have a safe place to work where they can anticipate what's coming. I know the addictive feeling of wanting to push the button, but I also know how rewarding it is to have a team that will consistently succeed, to watch people transform in their positions, and to have bigger and bigger promotions as a company grows and scales that continue to succeed at an even greater level because everyone on the team is helping us get there. If you're growing and scaling a business and ready to take yours to the next level, get in touch with us. I'd love to have a conversation with you. If you have a million dollar plus business or you've had a month where your business hit an $83,000 or about a $1 million a year run rate, reach out to us. We have a group where entrepreneurs are growing and scaling their businesses far faster than they ever thought they could. And they're doing it without the pain of building a team. In fact, when you build a team the right way, time with your team will give you momentum. I guarantee it.